So I am an idiot. I mean, I'm not. I know that I'm not, but I did last week two different like weird tests with some beard conditioners, right? And showed them to you, but also said in the video that uh, the one that I like the best is still going to be the one that you make from scratch as opposed to using a base and then just kind of adding stuff to a base. And could have sworn I had already given you that recipe in year one. And a couple people went back to look and they couldn't find it. And then I went back to look and I couldn't find it. So apparently that was just a weird fever dream that I had done that. And so now I have to correct it. So I am doing so today. You are getting a beard conditioner recipe from scratch. And I will tell you all about the beard conditioner recipe, my thought process on it all, and you know why I formulated it the way that I did in just a moment. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for day 245 of 365 days of soap. Yeah. And today, we are doing a beard conditioner recipe from scratch. Again, because I thought I'd already given you that guy, and I haven't. Now, this particular recipe is really formulated like a lotion, and so we are going to talk about what that means. Because a conditioner recipe, really the way that you make it, is going to be a lot like a lotion. This is going to be more of a heavy cream, and something that I would definitely recommend you use in the shower, and then comb it through with your cool beard comb, you know? And then give it a nice rinse before getting out of the shower, much like you would with the hair on your head, really. And we're going to talk about why in the video. So let's get to it and we will talk about the formulation and all the jazz, you know, where we always do, there. Okay, so a beard conditioner recipe and this is going to start out basically like a lotion does. Now, typically lotions are between 70 and 80 percent water, first and foremost. For this particular conditioner, I do want it to be more of a cream than a lotion. And so we are going to do a 60% water solution. Now, you can also sub in aloe vera liquid for this. Um, you can sub in, um, you can technically sub in like coconut milk if in powder form. But anything else, I would just, just stick with your water based. Let's not go weird with your beers and your stuff like that. So an aloe vera liquid or a water, distilled water, of course. And we're going to use 30% of oils. Typically, um, lotion recipes have anywhere between like 15 and 25% oils or butters in them. And then 10% uh, of your emulsifier plus your co-emulsifier. So that's going to get you your 100%. Now, once you have that, those things figured out, from there, you're then going to take that total amount and add in 1% of a preservative, a water-based preservative. And uh, optional is 1% of an extract and 1% of a, or you're sent to your usage rates. Not 1%, but it can be if that's what you want. Now, for this, I am going to use the extract and I am going to use a scent because that's what I like to do. And the water-based preservative, please go back and look at the um, preservative deep dive that I did for more information as to why you would use a water-based preservative. But really, the short answer to that is because this is primarily a water solution. There's more water than oils and butters. And so we are going to use a water-based preservative. 
and you are going to need one for two reasons. One, it has a lot of water in it. Two, it has, uh, it's, well, it's meant to be used in the shower where water could very well be introduced into the system. Now for this, I am not going to use butters at all. Nay, nay. I am going to use jojoba and castor oil to make up all of my oils because jojoba and castor oil, jojoba basically acts as a wax, castor, very, very interesting oil, high in ricinoleic acid. If I'm not going through another weird fever dream, and both are really good for hair softening as well as protecting and kind of sealing the shaft to create a nice moisturizing penetrating system. Now for this, I'm going to use the e-wax that we used a couple days ago, uh, specifically formulated for hair and beard that Crafter's Choice Wholesale Supplies Plus, whatever, for my first e-wax, as well as stearic acid. And then I also have my other measurements for preservatives and extracts and scent. So, you know, screen cap that, follow along. This is for an eight ounce batch of lotion, hair conditioner. You get the idea. Let's move on to the pour. Okay, so once you've figured out what oils and butters you want to use, your next step is going to be separating out your water from your oils, butters, and waxes and heating them both up. So again, as I said, we are going to be using this emuls this e-wax specifically formulated for hair and beard. It has satyral alcohol in it, which makes all of the sense in the world. Satyral alcohol is great as a conditioning agent. So that makes sense as to why it's in an e-wax for hair and beard and stearic acid for the rest. And you can do any number of other things for your e-waxes. You just need a good emulsifier. This is how I want to do this. So this is how I'm doing this. Now, once I get this in, I am going to start the heating process with just the waxes because they do take a little bit longer to melt down than the oils. And while they are melting down in the, in the microwave, I will measure out my distilled water. Now, as we talked about in the preservatives video and many other videos before, it's when you are working with something like a lotion, it is mission critical. It's important all the damn time, just first and foremost, that you are always working with a clean work surface. But for this, it's mission critical. You, you keep everything very, very clean. So everything has been wiped down. All of the utensils have obviously been cleaned and bleached and sprayed with some alcohol at the end just for extra good measure, just to make sure that everything is completely clean before making this so we don't run into any problems with any sort of beastlies growing on this in case the preservative fails. It's unlikely that the preservative will fail, as we have talked about before in the preservatives deep dive, but you know, just in case. And distilled water to that is also a very important thing to use because distilled water has been cleaned as much as it possibly can be without really weird intervention. So I like to pour my lotions for the emulsion stage at around 160 degrees for both solutions. So it takes longer to warm up the water than it does the oil. So keep that in mind. If you get your oils overly hot, that's fine. Just leave them out on the counter while you are heating up your water and they should be at a reasonable temperature by the time your water is heated to the correct temperature. Now, there are lots of reasons for this. Uh, the biggest reason is because everything is looser when it's all warmed up. And so it's going to accept the new compound, uh, essentially, shit, of the lotion. Now, for the first stage, I mix for a full two minutes with this. Putting the oil into the water, it doesn't really matter which way you do it, but usually, because there's more water than oil in a lotion, that container is usually bigger, but it really doesn't matter. Either way, it's fine. And I have a dedicated stir stick that I use just for making lotions that I never ever use in cold process soap. I only, only use it for lotions and conditioners. 
and I have the little whisk attachment on it as opposed to the, you know, other cutter thing. You know, the thing that'll slice your fingers off if you press the button while you're cleaning out the, you get it. And for this first stage, I mix it for a full two minutes before I do anything else. And during this time, if you're pouring at 160 degrees, by the time you are done with this first two minutes of mixing, it should be at a low enough temperature to actually put your preservative in directly. And you see there, it's still a very loose lotion here. It's still a very loose bond. And so it definitely still needs some more mixing, but it's time to put some more stuff in. Now, always pay attention to your preservatives um, instructions and at what temperature it should be, in, you know, put into the batch. For most preservatives, it's around 120 degrees. Anything more than that, you run the risk of burning off your preservatives and it not being as effective. So as long as you're around that, you should be good to go. And at this stage, I usually put in the extract and the scent just to give the entire solution a little bit more time to cool down before putting the preservative in. And then I mix it for another full minute. Making water-based products is not fun for me just because of these very kind of specific things that you kind of have to do. Now, granted, will anything really go wrong if you don't do it? Um, yeah, actually it could. It, it could. If, if you do not mix your, your lotions enough, any water-based, you know, solution like this, you very much run the risk of it separating and not staying together as one cohesive unit at the end of it. So I really do recommend that. Have people skipped a minute or two here? Well, probably, but I don't. This is not something that I actually mess with. So I continue to mix it to ensure that everything is well incorporated. And you see how it's continuing to get thicker, A, as it cools down, but two, as it's being mixed. We're gonna have a stable solution, folks which I love. So final step for me is going to be putting the preservative in and then another mix for another full minute. Now, again, this particular recipe, as I said earlier, this is really for a, an in the shower, deep conditioner treatment for the beard. So you get in, you get some conditioner on your beard after washing it, comb it through, and then go on with the rest of your day and your, well, the rest of your shower time, and then rinse that out last. Much like you would do with your hair on the top of your head. So, you know, leave it in three minutes or so, but probably rinse it out. The only way that it really works well, because this is such a nice thick cream, very emollient, very moisture rich, definitely softens the beard and seals the shaft so we're not getting any sort of drying or loss of moisture. It's because it's so thick, the only way that it really works as a leave-on conditioner is if you are taking your comb, if you have a beard comb and you're combing it through your hair, which is different than the recipe that I gave you. Well, either one of them, either you're using it from a base or the one that I gave you second about a week ago because that one actually has a lot of uh, really deep penetrating oils in it that does not leave a weird film on your beard. So this could, th this very well could, if you're not going to be combing it through. And you know, for people with textured hair, you might completely understand this, right? Um, because beard hair is usually pretty textured, but you know, people who don't have textured hair, they might not get that. But combing product through and really working it through all of the hair, wildly harder to do with a textured pattern hair than, you know, what I deal with in on my hair, like my actual hair on top of my head, for example. I know this, well, because I like literally do this professionally and went through a lot to formulate all of my products but a lot of tests, but also even if I didn't know that, I could just casually say I know that because my child has very textured hair. So 
that's been a whole new world of understanding. And I have had to go to professionals in the textured hair world multiple times. Like, hey, what, what do I use for her hair? How do I do this? I've had to learn over the years, really. And in learning, I developed some cool products that work. This textured hair, textured beard hair, this works really well as a deep conditioner for sure. You know what doesn't work well? Me and my ability to pour into containers. If I were doing this bigger, I, I would have a better process here. <laughs> but I'm just making two little bottles to, to show you. I don't... I'm a disaster. When have you ever known me to not be a disaster? Shit. But, you know, there it is. It's the conditioner. And let's let it set up and cool. And then we can actually check the, the texture of the actual product. So, yes, it's still messy. Yes, I'm still a disaster. I got pissed off and just walked away because I can't pour. But, you know, here's the part that was left behind in the actual container. And so let's look at that. Oh, that's so whipped up and beautiful. That feels so nice on the skin. That is just a lovely, lovely conditioner there. Feels good. There's no real waxy residue coming, coming from it. I love it. I wouldn't use this as a, you know, as a, a face moisturizer or a body moisturizer necessarily because it's a little thick, but there are people that have very dry flaky skin. So something like this would also be good. If you're looking at more of a cream instead of just a liquid lotion, this would work out well too. And it's all set up as you can see in there. It has all done its thing and it, that is a stable solution, which is good. Very, very beautiful, lovely conditioner, lotion, cream, thing specifically formulated to be great for the hair on your face as a beard person in the shower. It's a beard conditioner. Works out well. But yeah, no, any of the recipes that I've given you for beard conditioners would work. It really just does depend on what kind of person is going to be using it. And so if they're going to be and going to condition my beard in the shower people, this is definitely the way to go. That is day 245, the uh, beard conditioner from scratch. And there it is, a beard conditioner recipe. And again, as I said, this would not be one that I would necessarily recommend as a leave-on, especially not if you're, if, especially if you're not the kind of person that like does the combing of the beard, because it is a very, very thick cream. It's very, very emollient. It's meant to be very moisturizing, really helps seal in all of that needed moisture in the hair, but again, a little bit too heavy for a leave-in use, probably. Mr. Soap and Clay has incredibly textured beard hair, and he, unless he does get his beard come out and comb it through, he would prefer to use the lighter weight versions, the ones that aren't as thick than this. So either one of the recipes that I showed you a couple days ago, perfect for a leave-in. For this, for just a nice deep conditioner in the shower, for sure. Go to town, have a ball. If you are interested in making this and you do so, let me know. I would like to know how it all worked for you, for sure. If you're interested in purchasing this, these are actually only available in, as I said, for the last beard conditioner video, which I totally did do just like a week ago. Uh, they're actually only available in the subscription boxes. When the website comes back online, that's one of the things that you'll be able to get in your beard care kits. So, you know, Look out for that. I'm working on it this week. Having the downtime and being unable to run around and, you know, really go hard on everything has meant that I am forced to sit. And so being forced to sit means I can sit in front of a computer. So I'm working on it, you guys. It's happening slowly. But thank you for joining me for another round of 365 Days of Soap. I hope you guys learned something today. Big thanks to my Sudzers. Thank you for existing. And that's all. Just thank you for existing because that makes me happy. I'm out of here for today, but I will see all of you guys again tomorrow for another round of Soapy Fun. Bye.